he graduated from Inner Mongolia University in 2010 where he majored in history, stumbled on his first job and became a journalist. He reported for the financial news magazine Kaijing about the forceful demolition of artist A.I. Weiwei's workshop in Shanghai. He also covered Zhao Lianhai, a father whose son was a victim of melamine-tainted milk formula, and other rights defenders. In April, 2011, he was interrogated by Beijing police for 24 hours, and his home ransacked. For tweeting today on Taxi the driver said that two-third of taxi drivers in Beijing will stage a strike during the May 1 holidays. He was subsequently given a 10-day administrative detention for posting false information on an overseas website Twitter that was retweeted 37 times and caused disruption of social order. In February 15, 2014, John was invited to be one of four Chinese bloggers to meet with United States Secretary of State John Kerry during his China trip. 15. Zhang asked Mr. Kerry will you get together with the Chinese who aspire for freedom and help tear down this great firewall that blocks the internet. Kerry to look into reports that American companies had helped the Chinese government establish controls over what websites Chinese citizens could access. Zhang said the situation for political and human rights activists has not improved. He was worried about prisoners of conscience, specifically Su Xiong, a human rights activist who was sentenced last month to four years in prison, and Lu Xiaobo, a writer and activist who was imprisoned after being charged with inciting subversion of state power. Kerry would visit Lu Xia, wife of Lu Xiaobo, who had been under house arrest since his Nobel Prize win and who, he had heard, was suffering from illnesses. The Secretary of State said that the issue of Chinese political prisoners was brought up every time he met with the Chinese officials. Kerry did not directly respond to that appeal but noted he was only here for a day and a half. On February 16, the Chinese propaganda authorities ordered all web portals to delete reports about the U.S. Secretary of State meeting with four Chinese social media big vs to talk about internet freedom. Though he could still log in his Weibo account and post, but a search for his name would yield search result cannot be displayed according to relevant laws, regulations, and policies. On February 17, the Global Times published an editorial titled Asking the U.S. Secretary of State for Freedom was a pretty cute show, criticizing Zhang Jialong without citing his name and the appeal he had made to MR. Known for inciting nationalist sentiment, the Global Times is an offshoot of the People's Daily, the Communist Party's mouthpiece. On February 19, upon invitation by the Foreign Policy website, Zhang wrote an article spelling out everything he would like to say to MR. For many years, Chinese who aspire to freedom have spilled their blood and sweat fighting for it. To implement visa sanctions on those who contributed to creating the GFW, such as Fang Bingxing, the father of Great Firewall. On May 20, he was notified by the department head at Tencent that he was being suspended, citing radical expressions he made in his meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and the propaganda directives he publicized online. Has expressed deep concern about the reported firing of a Chinese blogger who had met with Secretary of State John Kerry and urged the U.S to challenge China's internet restrictions. The State Department said it would be very troubling if a private employee was fired for publicly expressing his views.